morning. It's Tuesday, April 27th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Blood White, and our scriptures, Revelation chapter 7. Then one of the 24 elders asked me, Who are these who are clothed in white? Where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who died in the great tribulation. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. That is why they stand in front of God's throne and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will give them shelter. They will never again be hungry or thirsty. They will never be scorched by the heat of the sun. For the Lamb on the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. It's always fascinated me, this strange image welling up in my mind of white robes having been cleansed by blood. Blood creates a stain that's hard to remove, and that's as it should be. Scripture tells us that the very life of every creature is in the blood. It is fitting that life should not be easily washed away. As a side note on a callous attitude towards life in this nation and in much of the world's countries today, life is too easily discarded. There's a mood of violence in our land, and it makes my blood go sour to ponder just how far we've traveled from pilgrims escaping the persecution of religious intolerance 400 years ago to the daily doses of murder and manslaughter in our day. Jesus told his disciples that in this life they would have tribulation. That is so for everyone who follows Christ. There are always difficult decisions to make. We are called to a life of obedience, and that requires accepting some things beyond our comfort zone and rejecting those things which our natural appetites crave. But the toughest of all is standing against the tide and swell of public opinion when they come crossways with clear scriptural mandates. One of the most difficult pills to swallow is how lightly we tread around the choice to abort life. In the name of personal freedom, the laws of this land permit infanticide. This stands in direct opposition to the teaching and commands of the great life-giver, Jesus Christ, who said, The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. The callous attitude which disposes of life is not going away. Scripture points to a time of awful tribulation where lust for power will supersede virtue and kindness. Death will be the penalty for lack of conformity to the rule of human idolatry. Those who openly worship Christ will be terminated. What we see today in barbaric displays of abortion, genocide, terrorism, and travesties of justice will be minor playground skirmishes compared to the Great Tribulation. But that is on earth. In heaven, a different story is being worked out. Evangelist Leighton Ford wrote the following about his son, Sandy. During the months following Sandy's death, to cope with my grief and sense of loss, I kept a journal. Through a series of, quote, conversations with Sandy, I continued to express my grief and bring our relationship to a close. In one of those chats, I said, Sandy, you've been dead two months, Earth time. Sandy replied, I feel as if I've been alive forever, Dad. It's a lot like one big long today. It's not a matter of time, Sandy, except that time heals. It's more a matter of nearness. I guess I'm concerned that as our time goes on, we'll lose any sense of nearness. But why, Dad? You're moving closer to eternity every day. You're no longer moving from, but to me. And besides, the wall between is so thin, you would laugh if you could see it. I think more of you than when you were at Chapel Hill. Sure, I know you do. I hear those thoughts. Night, son. Enjoy the stars.
It's morning here, Dad. Enjoy the light. Friends, only the nearness of Jesus can provide the kind of peace that can be called eternal. The world is looking for peace, talking of peace, and imagining peace can be had on a worldwide scale. They are wrong. But there's a peacemaker who is coming. For you today, peace is an eternal thing that's offered by the Prince of Peace, one person, one human heart at a time. And it's offered to you. It's for those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb, and it means the eternal presence of Jesus. Are you washed in the blood? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road.